Hello everyone, this is Luke again, and welcome back to yet another Ninjago video onto the channel today. As we know, Ninjago has good episodes and bad episodes. But today we're not going to be talking about those episodes in particular, but rather what makes up those episodes. And we're going to take a look at the eight, uh, let me count, uh, the eight signs, and I put up nine fingers, so <laughs> rectify my mistake, the eight signs that, that an Ninjago episode might be really good. Now, obviously, this will not, this is not a confirmed confirmation of if these signs appear, this will automatically make it a good episode. Some of the a signs appear in bad episodes as well, because in the end, it's all about the execution of what I am about to say, because if the execution of these is bad, then it definitely could have a negative effect on the episode. The first sign that a Ninjago episode might be good is if it has stellar writing. The writing is basically vital. It's almost essentially the heart of a Ninjago episode. If it's bad, the entire episode is pretty much fails as well. An episode has to have stellar writing in order to at least even be considered a good episode. Um, now, obviously, stellar writing for one person is not the same as another. So, what m one person may view as stellar writing may be viewed as horrible writing to another. For example, The Way Back. I know a lot of people love The Way Back. A lot of people think it has super stellar writing, but I am one not one of those people. I think it has terrible writing. So, there's that. Um, and... Let's talk about the inverse, where I think something is written good, but most people will disagree with me. Kai's Powerless arc from Season 11. I think it's a good arc. However, I know a lot of people hate that arc. So, stellar writing is definitely one of those subjective terms. I'm pretty sure all of these are subjective. All What I'm about to say are subjective, so there is no like actual 100% confirmation, as I said these do not confirm if this ep the episode is guaranteed will be good, but it definitely gives them a good chance of them being good. The second sign is if there is a shocking scene in the episode. Now, this is not, again, I have to say for all these scenes, these are not requirements, but rather good suggestions. It definitely signs at the very least. But if a Ninjago episode has to have a shocking scene, whether it be an on-screen death, or a shocking plot twist, or something you just didn't see coming, um, then that episode can be drastically improved by that. Because that, it will stick in your mind for a long time. Big examples of this are the Titanium Ninja with Zane's death, the turn of the tide, Nia's departure, Long Live the King, Try R's Murder, and TikTok with the most famous plot twist in the history of the show, Zane being a robot. So, the third sign, if it has gorgeous animation. If the animation is gorgeous, it makes this episode a lot easier to watch, and it makes it just really, really awesome to look at. This is definitely... If there is one example that definitely hammers this in, it's the season 8 episode, The Dead Man's Squall. That episode, mwah, has gorgeous animation, especially in the rain. I, I, that, the only, a big reason why I consider that episode, like, really good, especially, most people consider this episode to actually be one of the best in the season. And just for the animation alone, I mean, it stands out. It really, even if the even if the plot was a little dicey at times in the episode, the animation certainly made up for it. And it also has another point, which I will mention in just a little bit. Sign number four. If there is a backstory introduced in a certain Ninjago episode. Ninjago fans love backstories. Plain and simple. They love to see where a character got their origins, and what made them who they are in in that present moment. That's why, see, 
episodes with backstories get a lot of high praise from fans. These episodes as these episodes can in include the aforementioned TikTok with Zane's backstory, the Jade Princess with Cole's, and most recently the tale of Benthomar with well, Benthomar's backstory. Backstory episodes are just almost guaranteed to get high praise, even in a season that was not very noteworthy, such as Season 11. Even though Season 11 was not really that noteworthy among a lot of fans, one episode that fans did particularly like was, was The Last of the Formlings, even if the style they did it was very much criticized, um, as it showcased Akita's backstory and where she got her her willingness to for revenge against the Ice Emperor. Sign number five, if it is action-packed. I mean, that's one of the building blocks of Ninjago, is action. Um, because no one wants to see just a bunch of dialogue. Blah, 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 blah. That's boring. That's boring. Dialogue can be good, but when it's overused, it it really hurts the quality of the episode. Especially, in, this can't be stated further than with an episode in episodes within Season 7, as there was barely any action in Season 7 um, towards the middle, and there was just a lots and lots of dialogue. And the dialogue even then wasn't even that great. But if the scene, if an episode is just full of action packed, if it doesn't have any of the other ones that I mentioned, then if it at least is action packed, then it's fun regardless. Like, for example, some of the episode, I remember, I think one specific episode of Seabound, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Escape from Merlopia. I think so. I still think it's a good episode, even though it doesn't really add that much, honestly. Because it was full of a lot of action. There was a lot of action included with it. And again, it's a building block of what Ninjago is. And without it, Ninjago would basically be boring as hell. Sign number six, the lore. Now, a lot of people criticize the new Wild Brain episodes for not adding, for not being super lore focused. And a lot of people have come to defend Wild Brain and say, oh, not every episode has to be super lore-centered. And I can kind of see both sides of the equation. I can definitely see why people think there should be a lot of lore, because that is a cornerstone of Ninjago, because it's built a lore around the actual canon. But I can also see why not, because it is kind of a refresher to just sit back and relax and just watch the action take place. So I can definitely see both sides of the equation here. And while the lore can't be focused on in every single episode, when it is focused on, it's usually given a positive reception. I mean, look at Tournament of Elements. People love that season to death, and one of the reasons is because of the new lore additions. There was a lot of new aspects of the lore. It just basically opened up everything. And... That's a good argument. They It opened a lot of things up. And even in the earlier days, like, for example, as I said, TikTok, um, it opens up a lot of new lore. Lore doesn't have to be just world building. It could also be in terms of the characters as well. Like, the backstories, as I mentioned earlier, like, those technically fall into the lore. The lore makes up everything. Um... So, the lore is uh, definitely a huge piece of Ninjago, and it's definitely a good sign if a Ninjago episode focuses on, on the lore in some way, shape, or form. Sign number seven, if it's, if it's comedy. Well, I, and especially with the news that the new 2022 seasons will have a more comedic touch, I'm, I'm wondered what exactly are the the comedy is going to be because a lot of fans in ninjago do like the comedy but they don't want childish comedy they want something more adulterated where it was sort of like they reference 
stuff that most kids would not understand, but when they get older, they realize what the joke is. And I can absolutely see why. Adult humor is the best. It's funny in both ways. It's funny as a kid because you don't know what you're laughing at. You just assume it's funny for the sake of being funny. But when you learn as an adult, you just laugh because you know what's going on and you know what the actual purpose of putting it is. Like, for example, this is a bit of an ex an obscure one, but in Season 7 when Zane was examining the specs for the Destiny Shadow, Jay said that the name Exam Tab basically, quote, sounds like a laxative. And if you know what a laxative is, you would know why this is kind of dirty. <laughs> but in case if you don't know, it's kind of like stomach medicine. At least, I, let me check it for a quick... Yep, it's stomach medicine. I checked it on Google. They are used to treat and prevent constipation. So, it's essentially stomach medicine. So, <laughs> I'm not sure how they got away with that, but I'm glad they did, because we wouldn't have funny moments like these. And the final sign that a Ninjago episode may be great or good is if the acting is just stellar. Obviously, acting definitely does play a huge role, huge role, and obviously the actors will always try their best, even with a very iffy script, as shown in Season 7, where some of the lines were written were not great, but the actors basically did what, the best with what they could. Um, um, there have been several instances where characters have just shined through with their acting, um, and I always give them a lot of praise for this because one day I want to be an actor myself. And just to see that always gives me warm joy. I might be the only pe person who think this is a good sign, but I think it's a good sign nonetheless because good acting will always triumph over purposely bad acting. And those are my eight signs that a Ninjago episode might be really good. So, next time, somewhere down the line, I'll probably do the opposite of signs where a Ninjago episode might be bad. Might be bad. But anyways, what do you guys think of these signs? Do you agree with them, or do you not agree? And also, what other signs do you have for a good Ninjago ep episode? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Um, subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And click on the notification bell to see every video that I will upload. And I'll see you folks in the next video. Bye-bye.